outside the side to follow Johnson through. Let's see if they can nail him under brakes as they come up right. to turn two here, Pete. Have a bit more momentum there, but uh, Johnson will wake up to that. Not quite awake up to that move. Missouri really did have the momentum there. It would have been slower uh, through the turn one because of the tight entry. But uh, still able to hold off Missouri. 15 down. On lap 16 now. Dick Johnson and Dunlop Race Cam shows the battle here for 8th, 9th and 10th position. Thomas Missouri bearing down Bobby Pearson in Oops. plenty of trouble in the Pro Duck Commodore. Holds Someone it out of the gravel. Saw him take a bit of a wild ride across the grass seven days ago at Winton, and then he's done it again here. That was through turn one, too. Boy, he would have had his heart in his mouth for a few moments there. Well, he was thinking of going back, and he said, uh, I just think I'll park here for a moment and have a think about that. <laughs> yes, he's calling it a day, I think. No, oh, maybe not. Matthew well, Mark Luke and Pro Duck. Yeah. He's alongside Dick as they head up into the next one, uh, which we'll find Dick has the line for the turn. And here's Jimmy Richards. Now I remember I used to be able to do this. Johnson moves over and covers his territory. Very wide circuit here at uh, the Eastern Creek Raceway. A lot of opportunities to <laughs> lock up the braking area. Richards around the outside of Thomas Mazira, side by side as they come back toward the start finish straight. Not quite, but a nice try. Uh, Larry Perkins in trouble, unfortunately, heading back to the pit lane. Oh, he's going to reverse it into his uh, pit garage. He's calling it a day for this heat. And he'll bring us up to date with uh, the problems with the, uh, the Perkins cash drive machine. That's the second race um, in uh, in the two weekends that we've seen Larry park out of the uh, the first heat. Whoa! It had to happen. Thomas Mazira getting fed up there. Following Dick around, he's tried every different way to get past. Big shout from the grandstand again. Oh, uh, Dick is mad now. He's, he's uh, saying a few words there that we keep on tape 17 laps down leader good seat now on the 18th lap and let's look at this again on two is blue just a little tap from Mazera there to say i've had enough of this and and all it takes is the slightest tap when the forces and critical force leaning the car can almost push a car out of shape by hand there's dicky johnson did that naughty man in the holden hit you uh well michael you know it's like Driving around here in these tyres, the way they are, it's just like, it's a bit harder than trying to find a jury for no Joe Simpson, I think. <laughs> oh, that's a terrible thing to say. <laughs> well, I tell you what, this race field is about as long as that trial, too, I think. <laughs> well, you haven't got that long to go. Can you make it or will it be down to the canvas by then? Well, no, I suppose I'll just have to rest the fly spot and see what happens at the end. Well, you go off and have a good time and we'll talk to the holder man later. OK. okay. There's Glenn Seaton down into the left-hander. Peter Brock still making a little gain. Just took a tenth out of him then, 2.5 seconds. It feels like Glenn is just in control of the situation, easing back a little bit, Alan, or how would you? Well, I, I, you can't say for sure. We can't tell that. I, I sincerely hope for his sake that's the case. But we've seen uh, 05 uh, in his 5-0 uh, year uh, come barreling down on a lot of young guys earlier this year. So I don't think... Uh, it's a case of wondering uh, whether Brock is competitive. Well, there's, let's look back through the field. The first two have gone through. There's uh, Mark Scape and the Winfield Commodore having a much better day at Eastern Creek, running in third. Fourth is Alan Jones. Fifth is Bow, who's falling back into the clutches of Neil Crompton and Wayne Gardner and their co-Commodores. Jimmy Richards is up to eighth. Thomas Mazira is ninth. And Tony Longhurst and the Castrol Falcon rounds out the top ten. The penultimate lap, but one to go and they cross the start finish line this time around Seaton in control and uh mike said before great fight back from the winfield team just ahead of alan jones here in fourth position in fact a good fight back from alan jones himself only qualified tenth he's been uh, having a pretty miserable two days here in practice and qualifying but now he's ground his way up to fourth position some uh, three cars back from his teammate in the lead so good strong showing from the Peter jackson ford team here this weekend well brock would be uh, fairly happy even uh, in second at the moment because he picked up passing points in the dash where he ran third this morning nothing shabby about running second in this field mike absolutely not as they head down to uh, turn number one gap about uh, fairly constant scape in third jones in fourth their gaps about the same last lap Glenn seated maintaining that gap 2.2 seconds the gap 
lap over Brock that last time around. Seven seconds back there to Mark Skate. Glenn Seaton here with the headlights on just to warn any of those slower cars he's coming up on that the race leader is approaching. Takes it into the left hand of Brock a little closer than he was the last time they went by that turn. We'll see the gap. They head up now to. I think Glenn's just using his head here for more than a half rack and definitely bringing this one down nice and gently, not making any stabby moves that are going to uh, upset the handling, upset his rhythm, which is terribly important at this stage. Well, I guess it begs the question, can Bowie do anything more on the tyres he's on? Because if he changes, he then goes to the rear. So he's well, also he, facing a problem. He does have a fresh set of tyres for the second heat. No, I'm saying he's got the same set of tyres <laughs> <If he's laughs> that he had for the third. If he's got the same type, he's yeah. in trouble. He slips slip back through the field again. And, of course, the finishing order for the first heat designates the starting order for the second. So Bow has a lot of battles on his hands today. Check and flag time for Glenn Seaton. This is race number one of round number seven at Eastern Creek. Seaton wins barely from Peter Brock, who came storming at him at the finish. Third place is going to go to Mark Skay, followed by Jones and John Bauer. He'll just get across the line to finish in fifth place and away from the two Coke Commodores of Neil Crompton and Wayne Gardner. Let's check them out on the Shell race score. Glenn Seaton, the winner of heat number one, round seven. Peter Brock placed second and closing fast, he was. Mark Skay finished in third. Alan Jones was fourth. Neil Crompton, pipping. John Bauer on the line. Bow dropped back to sixth. Wayne Gardner was seventh. Jimmy Richards, eighth. Tony Longhurst and the Castrol Falcon finished ninth. And 015 Thomas Mazira, the mobile Commodore, rounds out the top ten.